but it will be a great way of being able to showcase um, you know, Starlink and Cisco and NetVault technologies all together. We're calling it the match made in heaven. Three, two, one, zero. Ignition, lift off. So if you already have a dishy McFlat face, I don't have to do much to convince you about what great things Starlink is doing for the world already, still in its beta phase. But for those of you that need a little bit more convincing, well, I wanted to find another story of how Starlink is already changing the world. And for this video, we're going down under. Nope. I can't do the Australian accent thing, but yeah, we're taking this interview to Australia. So as you know, Starlink recently rolled out for some users in Australia. It's pretty new there. And so far the people that are using it are absolutely loving it. I talked to a man named Radic. He is a senior systems consultant for NetVault. Hi everyone, Radic here from NetVault. And today we are super excited. Starlink is here in Australia and we've got one of the first units here to take a look at, if not the first unit here in Australia. Nice to meet you. You too, you too. I've seen you on your, a uh, few of your YouTube videos and obviously you, you, you're covering a lot of Starlink stuff, which is obviously uh, something that we've been sort of uh, working quite closely with uh, SpaceX on for the last six or seven months. And uh, yes, it's Project Halo. So of course I want to be your go-to girl for Starlink news. And I found this article the other day on Tesla Roddy talking about Project Halo. What is this? Well, it is a grant that will provide internet access via Starlink to students in rural underserved areas that really, really have a hard time getting online. So obviously this will prove to be invaluable. And I wanted to reach out to NetFault to learn more about how this partnership came to be. At our core, we're an, uh, an MSP or an ISP. So we have thousands of clients around the country and we've been watching uh, the, the Starlink um, story very closely and actually been working with SpaceX in the background um, on how to, uh, uh, to deploy this at, a, at scale. Um, so we've got a lot of clients that are in really regional rural communities who who struggle with decent internet access and and a lot of schools who just you know, can't even function in their in their schools with remote learning. So with this grant, an Australian regional school will get one hundred thousand dollars to put towards a world class communication system connecting to Starlink and the internet can be really bad in regional Australia. Here in Australia, we've got um, uh, MBN SkyMuster. So this is very similar to what you guys have in the United States with HughesNet and Viasat, those sort of internet providers. So the download speeds typically on an NBN SkyMaster service is about 20 to 25 megabits per second, if you're lucky. You know, a clear sunny day, not a cloud in the sky with no wind and, you know, keep your fingers crossed type thing. Um, but the latencies on, on those satellite services is the biggest problem. Because MBN SkyMuster is a geostationary satellite service, their ping latencies on those are 500 to 600 milliseconds. And it's those latencies that make video calls and voice calls, you know, remote learning, things like that, a real challenge. Starlink, is not a geostationary service. It's a low earth orbit service. So the latencies that we're seeing on Starlink services, you know, 20 to 20 to 40 milliseconds. We've topped um, the maximum speed that we've got out of a Starlink service so far is 345 megabits per second, which is, wow. you know, that's even faster than a lot of um, uh, fixed line copper based services or even fiber to the premises based services here in Australia. I, I don't know if SpaceX are, are going to be able to keep up those sort of speeds, um, but if they can, well, hey, they've got a fantastic product here that will give you know, users in Australia you know, access to really high speed services that were typically only available in the cities. Right now, the average broadband speed in Australia is nowhere close to that. In fact, Radic has a very affectionate name for the NBN network. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the National Broadband Network, sometimes called the No Bloody Network. Their average broadband speed right now is between 10 to 20 megabits per second with a latency of 
500 to 600 milliseconds. Can we say gross? So right now applications are open to any school in Australia that has students or staff in regional areas at least 50 kilometers from the nearest capital city. And this is super exciting because this is the first time Starlink technology will be deployed to a community in Australia. It's codenamed Project Halo and NetFault actually reached out to SpaceX and to Cisco with this vision to basically gift students, teachers, and families with high speed, low latency internet. The grant funding is enough for the school and 30 students at home for them to deploy, so that we can deploy Starlink units um, in the student's home, the student's teacher's homes, and the school itself, um, so that the school can be brought online with the 21st century with the you know, high speed access when students are at school, um, so that also when students are at home trying to do remote learning. The stories that we're hearing from some of the schools are you know, schools that have been really let down from a, a communications perspective, be that you know, the local government, the federal government, whatever the case is, to the point where um, the students can't even sit the required online exams that they need to do. There's something here in Australia called NAPLAN, which is a mandatory testing that schools need to do of their students every couple of years. And one of the schools that I'm talking to, they don't even have a connection to be able to do that reliably. Right. And that's coming up in a few uh, in a few months for them. They have no idea how to do that because they're a small school, 30 students, um, that are located 350 kilometers outside of Darwin. And one thing that I learned from Radic that was really interesting, NetVault will be using their unique Starlink plus 4G LTE failover technology. What this will do is provide reliability for the school telecommunications. It's a form of backup that we can provide on a Starlink service that if you order a Starlink service, we can augment that, improve that by adding seamless 4G failover where we can fail over to 4G LTE in under one second um, so that you know if, if there are not enough satellites in the sky or there's a hardware failure or something like that, the school can keep operating um, on a 4G LTE connection. Slow, slower than Starlink, but hey, at least they're still online. All eligible schools need to do is provide a 500 word submission about how the grant will benefit their school and community. And I think that they're gonna have the problem of having way more submissions than one grant that they're able to give out. But this is so exciting just to see another example of how Starlink is already making people's lives so much better already and it's still in beta. Now, we have heard from Mr. Musk himself that they do expect to phase out of beta, maybe even sometime by summer, probably by the end of this year for sure. NBN SkyMaster and NBN Fixed Wireless are really the ones that we can see this technology uh, being the most benefit for. If someone already has fiber, fiber to the premises, um, uh, some of the HFC cable-based services, yeah, okay, they are faster than uh, than Starlink, but they're not aiming for those sort of sort of users. They're aiming for the, the the really regional rural ones that are forced to use geostationary satellite services. It sounds like this will really change lives for so many Australians. Well, that's exactly the point. And this is sort of what we wanted to showcase with Project Halo is to show that, hey, there is, we don't have to put up with substandard internet access here in Australia anymore. Yeah, it's in beta. It's still coming as SpaceX launch more and more satellites into the sky and uh, increase density, hopefully increase speeds at the same time. I mean, Elon Musk like, loves his Twitter and, and putting out his tweets about latencies decreasing, speeds increasing. Hey, fantastic. Um, but it's what we're seeing live on the ground now, which is, you know, really promising from, from our clients that, have, that we've set up to work from home that can now actually work from home as opposed to driving you know, an hour and a half into the office office every day um, unnecessarily. And thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you learned something or you just love Starlink, go ahead and hit that like button. Of course, click subscribe and I have a lot more content that I will be bringing you very soon.